Welcome back to the Crochet Card as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. This is the Jester's Bag of Entrelac Tricks. This is my own design. Now this is the Entrelac pattern here and I will turn it to prove it to you. There is no slip stitching involved when doing this one here. So you can see that there was no particular sew marks. It's all done in a complete round. So we get you started with doing Entrelac in the round and we create a round tube. Then what we just do is that we do a round circle that's on the base here and then we sew it to the bottom of the tube. We then continue up to the other side and before you can sew on we have to do half triangles down here and up here to make it a flat edge because if you don't then you end up with these jagged uh, edges and then you continue along and you just do some single crochets. You're strategic about where you place your holes. You make your chain uh, work and then we single crochet along the chain and then you just feed it into the holes that you made and when you're good to go you can just tie it and be good to go. Now on the back here there is a strap and directly halfway into the back so directly straight back from where the tie is. You just sew on the strap to the top and to the base here and this is the Jester's Bag of Tricks. So without further ado let's go on into this tutorial and let's get you started. The pattern for this is in the more information of this video. So here we have the main body of Jester's Bag of Tricks and this is all entrelock and when you turn it around you will see that there's no seam line. So there's no uh, just a definite stopping point and then we've sewed it together. This is completely done in a round as in a tube shape format. You can see that I still have to weave in my, my loose ends. So what we have here is that there's 11 strips. So these green is one strip, blue is another and there's 11 of those going all the way up and you'll notice that I started off with the green and I finished off with the green. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna show you how to do entrelock in a round circle just like this and then when we continue in this uh, pattern I'm going to show you how to flatten off the side so it becomes nice and even again. We're gonna do that on both sides and then we're going to do a round base in order to put onto the bottom of this bag and then we're gonna continue to the top. So this is actually a pretty neat concept but for those that have never done entrelock you may be a little concerned. Let me take you to my writing notes on how to do entrelock. So here are my notes that I'm designing on the fly and what we have here is that this is the entrelock of the blocks and you're noticing it's stepping up like stairs. So if I keep the stitches even like that it looks like stairs. But when we go to cro uh, crochet this it's going to appear like a diagonal just like you see. So when you go to chain you're going to chain across like this and you're gonna have a straight chain but when you get this done all these boxes that you have or squares that they're referred to in the pattern is going to form the chain to make it look like this. So what we have to consider is that when we're doing the bag of tricks is that there's multiples 11. So each of these squares has 11 uh, chains to begin and then at the very end of the chain you can add one. So if you would like to change the size of this bag um, you just have to change the number of boxes which is a multiple of of 11. So I have 10 boxes going all the way around and so that gives me 110 uh, chains and then I have to add one which gives me 111 chains in order to do the bag of tricks. So let's talk a little bit about the entrelock going back and forth. Next. So the entrelock when you're coming across and you're starting to go back for the very first time you're going to collect your stitches as a Tunisian simple stitch and there's a total of seven of those uh, loops that will be on your hook. So when you look at those see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and then it's called a return pass and we come all the way back to the start again like a typewriter and then we collect the seven again and then we do the return pass and we continue to do that until we have a total of five of these uh, rows that are going and then you'll see the dots here that is slip stitching. So once we get to the top we'll slip stitch and we'll get ourselves to the next available chain here and then we work our way upward. So it's a really quite an easy pattern to be able to maintain. If you're new to entrelock don't let this uh, make you afraid and let me sh explain to you my bowling alley uh, theme that makes it easier for me to remember. When it comes to entrelac there's a thing in Canada here it's called five pin bowling in the US it apparently is not very well known. So there's actually five pins. So when you have bowling for example you have all your pins and then you have your gutters on either side. So if there's five pins and two gutters that gives you the number of seven. So what I want you to do is that I want you to look at these squares as if it's a five pin bowling alley. So you have the gutter which is the first section here. You have five pins one, two, three, four, five and then a gutter is the last section right here. So when you're thinking about five pin bowling for example you need to think about there's a gutter and a gutter. Now the reason why I'm telling you to think like that because how many rows are there? One, two, three, four, five. So the gutters 
don't count as in the row height. So for example, let's say we had um, a 10 pin bowling. So we want a 10 pins. We have to add a gutter. So what we have here it would be 11 and then there it would be 12. So in order for you to have the right height if you had 10 stitches going in the middle of the gutters you would have 10 rows high. So just remember the, the bowling alley theater, uh, the, the bowling alley uh, idea that you have to have gutters on either side and those really are when you remove those you get the right count for the number of height in the rows that you need. So the number of rows. So without further ado let's head on to our stitching pattern. You're going to need an 8 millimeter size L crochet hook and today I'm using Bernat Maker Home Deck Yarn. So as we begin don't forget I already said to you the green here is strip number one, the blue is strip number two. These are called strips. So when I'm referring to strips I'm referring to the boxes that are working across. So all of this here green is all worked together and then the blue is then built on top and then it turns back to green and that's just about changing your color. I find with myself if you're not gonna change your colors then I wouldn't worry about entrelac too much but this is a really neat concept. So let's uh, continue. We're going to do strip number one which is the very starting point. Everybody needs to start right here. We're in fact doing Tunisian but because you're only using seven loops on your hook you can actually fit it onto these hooks. So create a slip knot to begin and you need to chain in multiples of 11 but if you wanna do the bag as written it's 111. So just uh, do your chains. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and go all the way to 111 for me and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I zoomed out just to prove a point. This chain is huge. So you're gonna think to yourself that's way too big a bag when you form a huge circle. It's like almost a garbage bag size. Remember that the boxes that you do form like a, uh, an L shape like this. So when you go to do that you realize how actually short this chain will be in the end. So what I want you to do without twisting your chain so make sure it's not twisted I want you to join the two sides together. So just join the last stitch here with the first one that we're on right now and that will form a continuous ring and this continuous ring allows us to be able to go in entrelac in a continuous round without having any seams. So without doing any uh, twisting at all just go into the very first one and just yarning over and pulling through and through like that. So let's continue then on to the first uh, strip that we need to do. So let's continue on our first square. So right where we are right now is exactly the first stitch. So this is your actual gutter. So you notice that I have not chained up one. I, this is just where I've joined. So what I want to do is that I want to get the back hump of the actual stitches that you see. And once you get the first one they'll, they'll all jump out. So here's the next one right here. And I want you to insert your hook in and yarning over pulling through and gather it. So then you have two and then do the very next one the same way. So the back hump of the stitch or the back hump of the chain it's the next one and then pull through and start collecting them. So I told you that there's uh, five pin bowling so if there's a two gutters so it's a total of seven. So seven is the magic number that I want on the hook. I'm always taking my time in the beginning of these chains. You want your work to look perfect because you're creating actually the bottom edge of one of the boxes. So I have a total of six loops right now and then I'm just gonna go for my seventh. So this is the very base of one of the first square. Or this is the first square. So to go back we need to do what is called as a return pass. So we yarn over and pull through two and we yarn over pull through two and we keep doing that until we get only one loop left on our hook. So we're just yarning over and pulling through two all the way. This is called the return pass. This is the same for everything that we're going to do within this project. So let's go forward pass. So we need to have a total of five rows that go across. So that was number, uh, this is going to be uh, number one that we're going to do. So we're going to then come in and we're gonna pull through. So this is uh, in the vertical bar. Do you see that? So just going into the vertical bar and yarning over pulling it through. And vertical. This is called the Tunisian simple stitch. And you'll notice that it makes the work in behind fill in. See how it's filling in solid? And how many loops do you need on the hook? If it's five pin bowling and there's two gutters 
there should be seven. So there's gonna be six. But you notice you just ran out of stitches. So we have to go to the next available empty chain and just go into the back hump of that em empty chain and grab it. And that will be your seventh. So you're working up the side of the box. So there's your seven. So yarning over, okay. Uh, sorry, you're gonna yarn over and pull through. So there's your seven, okay. So what you're going to do, so you have six on the hook right now. So the seventh is actually the next available empty chain. So just yarning over, pulling it through. So you have seven on the hook and that's with the two gutters and the five pins for your bowling alley. So yarning over, pulling it through two all the way back through. So yarning over through two. And this is called the return pass. So if this is the return pass in the pattern, what is the forward pass? The forward pass is going forward with our hook and grabbing the simple stitch. So coming back in, we're gonna grab the next one. It's right here. So we don't actually go into the one right on the edge. That's your gutter. You come into the first pin or the first stitch and you just start gathering again. And you keep doing this until you get to the right height of the boxes. So when do you know it's the right height? I'll show you when we get there but we're not there yet. So you have six of your, your loops. You need seven. The seventh is the next available empty chain. So going through the empty chain. Always the first one is always the hardest. Pull it through and there is your seven. So yarning over, pulling it through two and keep doing that all the way back for the return pass. Okay, we're gonna go forward pass again. So just collect. It's called the Tunisian Simple Stitch. If you've never done Tunisian, now you are today. So you're creating these boxes to form the shape of entrelac. There's your six. So the seventh is the next empty chain that's available to you. So do you see how you've used the chain then along the bottom but you're also using it along the sides. And then pull through that empty chain. So now you have your seven again. So yarning over pulling it through two all the way back for the return pass. So I'm uh, pushing this out just to see if I'm at the right height and I'm not yet. I can see that there's one finished row, two finished rows, three finished rows. This is the fourth row but it's not quite finished. So I still have to come across again and I'm trying to give you a visual of when you're done. Because the very final fastening off of each box which is not fastening off the yarn itself but the finishing of each box is the actual completion of the fifth pass. So okay, so my that's six. So the next empty chain is going on. I pull through and then pull through two all the way back. So I know that based on my own experience that the next pass now is the final. So how do I know that? So I can see one's done, two's done, three's done, four's done. When a uh, Tunisian is done, when you go across in the forward motion, that is actually the completion of a stitch. So I can see that I have one, two, three, four. So when I slip stitch across this, I am going to be finishing that. So let's show you how to finish this. So it's, it's called slip stitching. So coming into the vertical and you pull through and through. You wanna be absolutely relaxed when you go to do that because you need to access these stitches down in the future. This is the outside of the box. So if you're too tight and you fasten it off, good luck getting your hook back in there later. So you wanna keep it kind of loose as you're slip stitching all the way across using the vertical. So now that I've slip stitched, I have to slip stitch into the next empty chain to begin my next box. So you can see there is one completed box done just like you see. So if you turn it diagonal it kind of looks like the pattern, right? So now we're going to then move on to the second box. So each one of the boxes are done exactly the same way. So let me show you again one more box. So right where I left you we're going to create another box. So I'm going to collect a total how many stitches do I want to collect? There's already one on one loop on the hook. 
So I'm going to collect the next six. So in the back loop of the chain I wanna collect those. So going in, pulling it through and keep it on the hook and keep collecting the ones in the chain because we need to create the foundation of this square or I keep calling it a box. So there's three. So meaning three loops on the hook. I want a total of how many? I want a total of seven of them. So there's four. This is five. This is six. And a total of seven. So there is my seven loops on the hook again. So I need to return past it. So yarning over, pulling it through two, 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 and keep doing that all the way back so that I end up with just one stitch left or one loop left on the hook. So I'm gonna forward pass now. So collect them again, so just like we did before. If you're nice and relaxed, it's a lot easier with Tunisian than it is if you're too tight. And I'm collecting. How many loops do I got? I have six. So my seventh is the next empty one on the chain. I pull through. Now I got my seven there. So pull through two each time going all the way back. So my goal is, is to see four and a half done and then I know to slip stitch to finalize off this box. And I keep doing that for all the boxes going across. So I'm now doing forward pass. Now in the instructions it'll say um, um, right to left. That's because I'm right handed but this tutorial could be in left handed for a motion. So if you're reading those instructions just be a cautious that there is a difference of left and right. Uh, as far as like the direction but it's still the same stitch work. So my seventh is the next empty chain. And then I pull through two all the way back for the return pass. Once you get onto entrelock you don't have to think about it too much. Um, it does nice tight stitch work and because it's Tunisian the back of it will look like it's knitting if you haven't already noticed that. Because Tunisian is a cross of knitting and crochet together. There's my six. So my seventh is the next empty chain. And then I pull through. So you notice I'm grabbing only the back hump of the chain because the sides of those boxes, all sides have to look uniform right. They have to look like they're completely done and that's the only way to do it. So let's forward pass again. And then my seventh is the next available stitch on the, on the chain. So this is the only time you really have to worry about the chain to get started. I know for some people it may be a deal breaker but that is the way it is my friends. So let's count how many are actually done. So I have one, two, three, four and a half. So to finish this one to get my five I have to slip stitch to the other side to be done. So slip over and through. Going in, pull through and through. Nice and easy does it and I'm finishing off this box before I can move on and start another one. So what I want you to do is that I want you to continue along your chain. So when you get to that final one there you have to slip stitch to the next available chain before starting your next box. There you go. Okay. So then you're ready to do another box. So this is what it's gonna look like as you make your way across. There should be a total of 10 of these and you'll come back to the very start where I'll meet you there in, in a moment. Uh, I'm gonna do this off camera and I'll see you there and I'll give you some trip, uh, tricks at this point. So remember you have to collect the next six, work your way back for the return pass and build it up just like you've seen already. So I'm on my very last box and I'm on the final slip stitch going across. What do you see in this? You're seeing that some boxes are kind of turned around and etc. So I want all the boxes to face the same direction. So before I finish off I want to organize and just turn anything that needs to be turned in order to have the consistent look. So all of the, the right side should be facing out. So 
it looks good now but what happens in this particular project is that you can actually have a box turn around on you and you can start it in the wrong direction. So what I'm highly recommending before you finish the final box I want you to fold it in half so that and I'm just going to pull this an extra long tail. I want you to fold it in half so that you see that there's five boxes. Okay so there's one on top of each other and when you go to carefully turn that over you should see all the right sides facing out on the other side. Using some spare yarn what I want to do is that I want to insert and I want to just bring these boxes together. And this is just gonna temporarily hold it so that these boxes don't accidentally turn around on you. Now you don't have to do them all. I would just recommend that you just do a couple of them just to or maybe even three of them just to make sure that you're not losing track of your boxes. When I first started learning entrelock for the very first time I wasn't sure what was up or what was down. So this is a neat way to be able to guarantee to yourself that you know what direction these boxes are in. And these will hold them so that they're facing the right direction too. So if you wanna do them all you can. It's up to you. So to make it easier for myself I did all of them so it's folded over. So no matter how much you turn this now they will be attached to each other so that you don't have to worry about a box accidentally flipping on you. And it just it really is required in the first verse round. So what I want to do is I wanna go back then and I wanna finish my final box here. So one, two, three, four and a half. I'm going to slip stitch. Now we're going to finish off this yarn and we're going to bring on our blue next. Now the thing about it is that even if you don't change your yarn colors you always have to fasten off. As much as you can try to slip stitch to get yourself to where I'm gonna show you next the problem is the slip stitch is always so obvious so it doesn't really work out very well. So coming into the very last one and you see that you're in the middle of the boxes here. So you should always when you're in on, on in interlock you should always be on a point when you're going to do this. So we're going to then just finish this off and I'm going to using darning needle later on to be able to fasten that off. So just pull it through and then what I would do is just pull it through the bottom and then it's out of your way. So we're going to begin the second strip which is building on top of, of every strip from this point onward. There's a total of 11 of them. So this is one. We're gonna do two. It'll be the same thing all the way until you get to box number 11. So let's continue and we're gonna do the second strip. Now that the hard work has really been done establishing the chain it gets easier from this point. So I'm grabbing my blue. Now what you have here is that we finished off down here. You're saying it's kinda like sloppy looking. It'll pull together. I want you to look and I want you to grab the first stitch that is appearing in the flat. Can be any one of these boxes. It doesn't matter which one it is but it's the one that is leaning towards you in this direction. So it's not this one, it's this one. And I want you to attach your yarn here. Okay so let's create a slip knot and I'm leaving an extra long tail so I can use a darning needle later to fasten that in and I'm gonna pull through that loop and that is considered my very first stitch just that loop by itself. So I'm not chaining one and I'm letting the straggler fall out. Now you can't bury the straggler as you're crocheting because of the way that you're looping things up. So what we want to do is that we last time we were going across here at, which was the chain and then we were building up on the side of the chain. Now we're just working across the box and then up the other side of the box. So let's uh, show you how to do that. So this is considered one of seven. So moving along to the next stitch, this is your slip stitching. If you remember, if you were tight it'll be hard for you to get it in. So you're just gonna start collecting. So that's two loops on the hook, three and you keep grabbing them, four. Working your way across, five. This is the last one, this is six. And then your seventh is in the next box. It's on the side and you pull through. So there is your seven loops. So you're just gonna pull through two, two and go all the way back. You already know how to do that if you're this far in this tutorial. So you see that you're building your way up here but you're building it along the side of this box here. So we're gonna simple stitch again. So we're just gonna collect until you get seven on the hook. The seventh will be in the next box. You just keep collecting. Okay and there's six and then the seventh is in the next box. It's in the next uh, one up in the box. So this is the first one we did so it must be moving up. And then we pull through twos all the way back. 
So you see we're attaching them to both the bottom box and the side box at the same time. That's entrelock. So you're gonna pick up again. So these are filling in those spaces. And then you go to the next one that's available on the next box. Now the nice thing about it now that you've done the hard work of kind of watching things you wanna watch your height going across to match the next box and when you get closer to the height of it you kinda know that you gotta slow down a little bit so you don't have to um, obsessively count like you had been in the past if you were obsessively counting. Okay and then the seventh one is in the side. And then pull through your twos. So it'll still appear as four and a half done and then you slip stitch it to the other side. So this is three and a half done. You can see that. So let's carry on. So pick up. Okay and then the next one is in the next box. And you pull through returning pass. This is four and a half. I can tell that from experience but I can also tell based on the side of where I am. Okay. So now we're going to continue. So you see that it's four and a half. So I want you to just slip stitch yourself now across. So you're finishing off that box before moving on to the next. Okay. And your next one here when you look at it, you can count the number, number of boxes if you wanted to. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's the seventh one there, which is the one that I want to go in anyway. But if you're not sure, just count it backward and you can see it. And then that box is now complete and you can see it's resting in between. So to start the next box, that's one already on the hook. So you just start collecting till you get to the number seven. The seventh one is in the next box which is right here. Okay, there's your seven and return pass it. And then continuing again picking it back up. So you're gonna do exactly what I've already showed you before. The only difference now is that you're working within existing boxes. You're not working on a chain. So there's six. So you move to the next one that's available in the box. And you will notice that even though you secured everything down here at the base, you'll notice that it will totally make sense as you're coming around on this one. The, all the boxes should be in the right uh, positioning as far as like direction. Um, during the prototype um, I accidentally had one box turned upside down when I got to it and I had a frog. So it's just easier to be able to catch your errors on the go than it is to realize it later and then have the frog waste all your time. Okay, continuing across. And keep on moving across back. This is the re uh, reverse pass or, or sorry the return pass it's called. And you he don't hear me counting because I'm using the sides of these boxes to indicate how far along I am. Okay and I'm coming to the next one. And this is four and a half because I know where I am on the top side of this box. But I can also count it two within the front face. So I got one done, two, three, four and a half. So then I'm gonna slip stitch it to finalize this box off and move along. So you're going to do all of these going all the way around. There's gonna be a total of ten boxes like they were before and they're resting in between the other ones. So when you have that all the way down around to the other side just slip stitch to the next one just to start. So when you get all the way back around you're gonna end up right here. You're going to uh, fasten off and then you're going to start your green at any point on the top and then begin to fill in the spaces just like you see. So it's really not a hard pattern to be able to maintain when you see it from this perspective and uh, you can just see you're just filling in the spaces as you're going just like you see. So what I want you to do is that I want you to do a total of 11 strips. Okay, so remember what I said. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10 and 11. And then once you get those 11 done, what I want you to do is, is that I'm gonna show you how to fill in these with triangles at the base and then we're gonna move along in the, in the bag. So we're gonna move along in our project and you should get your height done and then you're gonna have these jagged edges. So our goal is is to fill in these with triangles. They're very, very easy to do. The instructions unfortunately how to do it is pretty lengthy but it's so, uh, it's really quite easy that it's not even funny. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring back my blue and I'm gonna do the same with both sides. So I'm only gonna show you the one side and then I'm gonna turn it over and do the other side here the exact same way. So you really can't tell if this is up or down, can you? No, it's all, it's pretty awesome. So let's get started and I'm gonna show you how to fill in those triangles now. So when we go to look at the triangles, what's happened here is what, if you build it square and you keep it even, you end up with a point back on the top. But what happens when you decrease the stitches when you go to do the return pass, you end up getting a triangle like this. But we need to cause that to happen in order to happen. So when you notice on trail, like it's gonna have a natural curl. So this is going to absolutely flatten it down. So we're gonna create a slip knot to begin. So it's like we had already done before but what we're going to do is that we're gonna decrease stitches as we continue. So we're gonna go into the top of the one here and I want you just to fasten on and that's gonna be the first loop. So there's no chain one required. So you, I want you to collect until you get your seven loops back on the hook. So just collecting across. So we have one two, three, four, and five. So there's a total of six because the first one was counted. So then the seventh is in the next box. So we already know how to do that. The trick is, is in the return pass, we want to combine the final three stitches together. So you're gonna yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over, pull through another two and yarn over and pull through another two. And your goal is, is that you're looking for only three loops to be left, which is right now. So once you have three loops, pull through all three. You just decreased. So just restart the next row. We don't, we don't, see how this is part of that one? You don't wanna get that one, you wanna get the next one. So you collect that one first, and then the next one, and keep going then all the way to get the next square. So this time there's only six loops on the hook, not seven. So pull through all two, 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 and look for the final three and then pull through all three. So that we're decreasing. So we're gonna then start the next one. Remember that this is part of the decrease so you wanna skip that one. So start collecting again. This is the forward pass. Grab the box. Okay, and again, we're just returning the twos until you see the three on the hook, pull through all three. And then keep on going. So we're in fact making a triangle. Okay, pull through two and then pull through all three. And then this is the final one. So going in, pull through, and then the side of the box, which is the final one on the side. See how you only have three? Pull through all three. And when you go to start the next one, you have to slip stitch into the next empty one on the box, which is the very top again to go. And you can see, you just filled it in with a triangle. So I'm gonna show you one more time. Start again. So we're gonna collect. And there's gonna be a total of seven loops like you had before. So the first one's be seven. So we're essentially decreasing the amount of loops as we go across and the seventh is in the next box. So then pull through two, two, and you keep doing that until you see that there's three loops left, which is now, and we're gonna pull through all three. So we just did a decrease. So we're gonna start in this one because this one here is uh, part of the decrease. So you collect, collect, and there should only be six loops on the hook next time, not a total of seven. So I drop my stitches here. So I'm going all the way across, grabbing the next one in the box, and then pull through two, two, and I'm looking for the magic number for three loops, which is now. And then I'm coming back again. And this time there will only be five loops on the hook. Pull through two, two, and then the final three. And then going across, 
So there will only be four loops on the hook. Pull through two and then the last three. Then moving forward, this will be the last one because I can tell from the side of the box that I'm up there. But also I can tell that there's only going to be three. Pull through all three and then slip stitch to the top of the next box. And you're ready to go again. So this will be how you create the triangles then at the top to give you a flat surface that you need in order to finish off your bag. I need you to do that for this side and I also need you to do it to the other side. So once you're ready for the other side, just turn and finish that off, turn your bag around and then just re begin again on this side. So please flatten off your edges now. So when you get all the way back around, you're just going to finish off your last uh, triangle and I need you to slip stitch then to the beginning and if you don't then you end up with one that looks out of place. So just slip stitch and then you're just gonna weave in this end and I want you to flip it over and do the other side as well and then we're going to then fasten on the bottom to one of the sides. They're both equal at this point so it doesn't matter which one you're gonna do. So just fasten this off and let's uh, apply your bottom. So let's create the base of your bag next. So now that you got your top and the bottom edges done, we need to create the bottom of the bag so that it'll hold. So this is a separate unit that is sewed and we leave an extra long yarn tail at the very end in order to do that. So this is an incremental increase and if you look really probably carefully, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, you see how it's like pinwheeled. There's a total of six of those going all the way around so we're growing incrementally as we go. So by the end of it, you will have 15 um, single crochet sitting by themselves and then two into the next. So we just incrementally get bigger. I'm Gonna show you how to begin that and then I'm gonna leave the rest of it for you because it's just increments in order to get to that size. So due to the tightness of the bag, you wanna go to a six and a half millimeter size a K crochet hook using your Bernat Maker Home Deck. Now because Tunisian is really tight, if you go to the same size eight millimeter, it'll have extra gaps that you don't want in your work. I'm going to create a slip knot to begin and I want you to chain a total of two. So one and two. And now second chain from the hook, I want you to place in six single crochets. So I have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And once you have your six done in there, I want you to go and slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet. So let's move along. So you're gonna chain up two and then this round you're going to put in two single crochets in each. So just one and two and you keep doing that all the way around. So two into each. So there will be a total now of 12 stitches going all the way around if you wanna pay attention to that. Um, it's also listed in the pattern like that as well. And then we're, we are actually increasing in increments. You just can't see it yet because we're too close to the center. But once we get there, you might wanna double check. So you got one, two, three, four, five, and six. So now we're gonna continue now to do increments. So the first stitch is gonna be chain one and you're going to put in two single crochets into that one. So, so one, and two and the next stitch is gonna be one by itself. So the next one is two into the same one. So one and two and then the next one is one by itself. So please do that all the way around for this round and we'll meet you at the end of this round. As you come up all the way around, the last one will be one single crochet by itself. That's no magic trick. That's just keeping in order of the counts and slip stitch to the beginning single crochet. So as I mentioned it's increments so you're gonna chain up one and there's gonna be two into this one which is the first one and then the next two are gonna be by themselves. So just single crochet in the next two. So one and two and then the next one is two into the same one. Okay and then the next two are by themselves. So that's an incremental increase and we continue to do that all the way into the very end. Just continue to do that uh, around again and then I'll meet you and try to explain the rest of it for you because you really don't need to see it to uh, entire tutorial to do all of these rounds because if you understand the increments it makes sense. So I'm just finishing up this round here and no special tricks just following the counts and then I'm just slip stitching to the top of the first one. So that one uh, was uh, two single crochets in a row. So this one's chain up one, two singles into this first one as always. And now the next three are gonna be by themselves. So do you see that the, the amount of numbers that are by themselves increase with each revolution and then it's two into the next. Okay, so then the next three are by themselves. So one, two, 
two and three and then two into the next one and three. So what I want you to do is that I want you to finish this off and I want you to continue to get bigger and bigger. Let me just zoom on out and what it is here is that by the time you get out here there will be 15 single crochets by itself and then two into the next one and then that's where you're going to stop. So as you're working away there just get more single crochets and you can probably see it. I'm not sure if you can or not based on my point of view. Um, you can see how that's increasing is happening. It's like a pie shape that's getting out bigger and that's because there's getting more and more single crochets in a row that don't have two in a row that create that. So what I want you to do is that I want you to get that done. It's approximately around 10 inches that in order to get the size and that's what you're going to do and then you wanna leave an extra long tail because then we're gonna sew it to the bottom of the bag next. So what I want to do before I get started with fastening this to here is that I want to just roughly attach it so that it looks even. So just go into a spot and just kind of just eye it up on the one side. So just grabbing the one side of the panel only and just pulling it through and through and you're essentially just kind of locking it into position so that you know exactly where to sew it on the other side. So what I want to do then is flip this over roughly where it appears on the other side and flip and then just grab another strand and kind of attach it in the same spot. So it's, it's on this one and this one. It's just enough for it to hold it into position while you go to do your whip stitching around. Once you get that done I want you to then just kind of attach to the sides here using the same technique of just extra strands and just coming around the side to the side. I've done stuff like this where I have not secured it down into position and then you end up just sewing and then not and then it not equaling at the end. So at least this will hold it so that you can keep an eye on it if you have to improvise at all with that. Then you're gonna do the other side. And therefore you can just kind of keep an eye on everything as you're going all the way around. So what I want you to do with that extra long strand you left at the base, I want you to then get a darning needle and we're going to whip stitch this into position with the base of this and use these stitch uh, marker holders just to give you an indication of where you are and if you have to speed up just the joining or if you have to kind of just kind of combine things then you can do that as well. So let's do your whip stitching. So grab your tapestry needle and put the yarn on the hook that is coming from the base of this that we left and I want you to just to go across the section and then back down. So kind of get the stitches to kind of match to each other and then just kind of pull through the first time. So because these greens are kind of holding things in a position you get an idea that when I hit the next green they should both be equal. So you can see that it's kind of buckling a little bit and that's gonna naturally happen anyway. So it's a matter how you deal with it. So to do the next stitch just grab the other side. So if one side is buckling more than the other, see how you go. I can skip one of the stitches at the base here and then just advance to the next one and things will eventually equal itself out. It's not gonna leave a hole. So then I'm gonna come in to the next one and pull through. And what I want to do is that I want to get all the way around this particular base. And I'm just kinda keeping an eye on where I am. The trick is is that if it's buckling too much, if you uh, compensate for it too quickly, what happens is that you end up seeing it. But if you just take your time, I know that there's still more in this side. If you just um, take your time and kind of just eyeing it up. So I'm gonna go in the next one and I'm gonna skip the one in front. I'm gonna go to the second one over and that will get it to line up even more. So I want you to whip stitch yourself all the way around to the base of this bag. And this one I'm going to skip the next one, go to the second over. And then I'm gonna skip the next one again. So coming in the back one, skipping the next one. And you see the more you do it, see it's getting more and more equal. 
don't be scared to tug on it. This yarn is really quite decent to do that. That's why we're using it for a bag because it's got the strength it needs. Okay, coming to the next one. I'm gonna skip the next one and second one over. Skip to the next one. And you see it's almost almost equal now by the time you get to that spot. Do you see it? So what I want you to do is continue in that same manner going all the way around. Just keep it nice and tight and then I'll see at the end where we're gonna fasten that off. So when you get all the way back around what's gonna happen is that you're just gonna take out the stitch marker that kinda kicked us off and then we're just gonna do your last one. So what I want to do is that I wanna create a little micro little knot. So just going in and out just a little bit just to catch it onto itself and then we're going to do this secret trick. It's not really a secret, everybody knows it, but um, you can just glide it in the project three times. So making sure it's catching lots of fibers there. So one, and then back in the other direction for two, and in the other direction for three. So what I would highly recommend at this point is that you're gonna have to get rid of all the loose ends that you had on the, on the inside of this. So now I can just get it right down into the project. You'll never see it. So what I want to do is that I wanna turn this inside out. I got a lot of tails because of uh, the fact that you have to change. And so what you're going to do with the tails is that you're gonna weave them in and out three times and uh, you'll get those all into position and then I'll meet you back here. Um, in this particular case I have to still do the top here. I told you I'd already do it in this tutorial but I haven't done it yet. So you're gonna flatten off this top if you haven't already done it. So this is kinda what it looks like so far. Uh, a little bit of a rounded base here on the on the bag and then when it sits flat and then it will have a flat surface with a round cylinder look. So let's get rid of the rest of our tail ends and let's continue. So let's go back to the top of the bag. So the base is already in and now you have the top rim. So we've gone all the way, we've made it triangle. Well we've done the triangle. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to do one more layer of single crochet going all the way around and then we're gonna make some um, holes in order to um, do a tie string. So I'm just going in the top of any one. I've done it right where I finished off before just to be consistent. So I'm just going to attach chain one and I'm going to single crochet into each one of the stitches going all the way across or all the way around. So just one single crochet into each and then meet me back here in just a moment. Do not fasten up though keep this same color going. So I'm coming up all the way back around to where it started. So the next round what we're going to do is that we're going to apply the holes in order to um, create the drawstring. So I'm just going to attach to the top of the first one like so. So let's begin again. So we're gonna chain up one and I want you to single crochet in that one plus the other um, three more that are, left, that are next. So let's include the first one. So one, two, three and four and what I want you to do is chain one, skip one and then go into the next one for a single crochet. So single crochet that one plus the next one. So it's, it's a total of four single crochets in a row. And then chain one, skip one, single crochet into that one plus the next three. So you have four in a row again. And you're gonna do that all the way around and these are creating the holes that you would like to do to do a drawstring. So chain one, skip one and single crochet the next four. So please do that all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I'm just following the stitch counts properly in order to do it. So I have my last stitch which is the, the, the one that needs to be skipped. So chain one and then just join to the top of the first one. The next two rounds are exactly identical but the first time we do it we have to fill in those chain one spaces that you have. So you're going to chain up one, single crochet in each stitch going all the way around and when you hit a chain one space just go right into that space instead. So just single crochet. So here's the space. Just go right into the space. It will open it up a little bit and then continue to go around. So just do each stitch and space as you go all the way around for a single crochet. We have one more round to do after this. Okay, coming all the way back around I'm just going into the final chain one space and then just joining to the top. Gonna do one more round of single crochet. So chain up one and we're just gonna do one single crochet into each going all the way around and each at the end and then we're gonna just do one final um, trim round and then that's it. Okay, coming all the way around and I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet. We're going to finalize with the reverse single crochet and we're gonna go back in the opposite direction from which we came. So we chain up one and we go into the same stitch and we pull through 
and pull, and pull through. It's a single crochet but done reverse. So just go into the one before it, in, pull through, and then pull through two. And keep doing that. So just go in reverse and it will do a really cool trim to the top of your, your bag. So reverse single crochet all the way around. When you get all the way around just slip stitch and then um, fasten off your yarn and weave in your tail ends and we'll start creating the drawstrings next. Okay when you get all the way to around to the end what we're going to do is we're gonna fasten this off, leave an extra long tail and you're gonna use that to sew it in. So just pull through and the secret, remember I showed you at the beginning or around the beginning of the tutorial about fastening off going back and forth three times. Well there's no difference today. In the reverse single crochet though um, just take your time because you wanna make it look consistent and stay towards the back of the project. So this is the interior of the bag so you don't wreck the, the front face. And when you pull on it you wanna make it look like it belongs there. Okay a little bit of manipulation goes a long way. And now just turn it over picking some different fibers to go through. Just stay towards the back side if you ever see the needle hit the front side or go right through the front. See? If you ever see it go through the front then you know you've gone too deep. So just stay towards the back side and just catch it into some fibers three times. There you go. So what we're going to do then is create the drawstring next and fasten this off. I'm going to use green for my drawstring. Okay going back to a six and a half millimeter size uh, K crochet hook you are going to then chain a total of 34 inch long chain. Okay so just have your tape measure ready for you and go 34 inches. So you can see I'm not counting I'm just gonna rely on the tape measure and we're gonna do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. For the drawstring chain I want you to chain 105 using a size K six and a half millimeter size crochet hook. Once you chain your 105 you can just stop me here if you just wanna catch up and then you're just gonna go second chain from the hook and just single crochet yourself all the way back to the very beginning of the chain and that'll be your drawstring when you get back to the other side. So just continue just to single crochet across your chain to complete. When you get to the other side of your chain that you're just single crocheting I want you to just fasten off and weave in both of your tail ends that you have completely so they're completely out of out of place, out of sight, out of mind and then I'm going to feed this into the holes then that exist here in the bag. So to weave in and out I'm just gonna start from the outside of the bag push it in and then I'm going to then just pop it out the other one and I'm gonna keep on doing that all the way around to insert this chain into position. So once you woven it in you'll notice that there's two it comes out it doesn't come out the same hole and then you can see that it just weaves in and out just like you see. So you can pull on this then to close it off when you want to. You can tie it into a bow if you want to. So you have plenty of options to do at this point. So um, let's continue along. We have to do the strap for the back. Continuing to use the size K for the strap on the back I want you to create a slip knot and I want you to chain a total of 80. And what we're going to do then is just single crochet ourselves back uh, and forth on this chain. So I have one, two, three, four, five. So please chain 80 for me. Meet me back here in just a moment. Once you have 80 done second chain from the hook just the back hump of the stitch and I want you to single crochet uh, back across. So I want you to single crochet a total of six rows. So this is gonna be considered number one and so I want you to uh, go back and forth single crochet for a total of six rows in order to do the strapping. So just do that now and maybe at the end of this and I'll do this off camera. So now that my strap is done I've just turned it over so I can see the front ties and I'm gonna turn it over so that that is the middle one right here. So I'm going to not be gincy and when I say gincy I don't want you to be cheap on the yarn as far as attaching it. I want you to really think about the weight of this bag and on the other side of the darning needle I'm going to put a slip knot that I will use. So what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna use this blue as my center point Okay and I'm gonna come in from the other side and I'm gonna just insert the strap onto there and push it through and I don't want and I'm gonna go back down through this strap on a different point of view and through the same one and what I want to do is grab that slip knot here and put it onto the hook and that will secure and pull everything nice and tight. So you have a knot on the other side. 
So I want you to work across the strap. Okay, and if you notice ever um, knapsacks and stuff, they actually don't attach just one straight line across. They actually go about an inch down. So what I want you to do is that I want you to keep on going around as far as like making sure that it's gonna uh, be attached really quite nicely. So I'm going in and out across the top and now I'm gonna come down and I wanna go about a thumb distance. So from this area to my thumb, I wanna go that distance down. I'm gonna do this for the same for the other side as well by the way and just make sure that you keep it so it looks like it's going straight down. And I want you just to keep sewing this into position. So I'm coming back out. And this when I go back down is the lowest I'm gonna go. So now I'm gonna work across the strap again and I'm gonna just go across and then back up and then I'm gonna go and just fill the space in so that the other side you can kinda see it more clearly. But my point being is that I want you just to really think about the weight of these bags when you put stuff in it. So you wanna really give this uh, strapping a really good secure hold. One thing I've seen with crochet bags is that somebody will sew across just one uh, seam or just like one strand and then the bag gets really heavy and then it starts ripping or it starts um, really uh, stressing out the bag. You don't want that if you can avoid it, right? So just take your time and secure in your strap. Please do this the same with the other side. Let me just get down there and show you. So just move it straight on down and then just follow it. So you can follow the blue boxes or whatever color that you decided to do and then do the same with the other side. You'll see that there is some give and play to this. Let me zoom out a little bit. So there's give and play so that you can uh, wear this. And again just start at the very base and just secure about one inch up and therefore it's good to go. So please secure your strap now. So this is it. The bag is secured. You can see the distance that it's been sewn in down here. I just come up to the front and it's been sewed the same distance up at the top and now that's good to go. So when I'm ready to go I can just uh, stuff my bag then throw it over my shoulder. I can just uh, pull the tabs here or I pull the drawstring and I'll tighten everything back up to the top here or I can release it. Whatever you want. You can also tie this and I made it long enough so you can tie this into a nice generous bow if you would like to and uh, to keep people's hands out of your bag as you're wearing it as well. So um, lots of great ideas and this is the Jester's um, bag of tricks and this is using Entrelac and uh, hopefully that you've learned something valuable today. So without further ado, have a good one. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye. <music>